When it comes to thinking about the pH of a, a hop forward beer, we think quite a bit about it actually, and it starts from the hot side. We're a direct fire system, which means we get a little bit more color pickup than we would want just from the, you know basically having a giant flamethrower in the bottom of our kettle. So we're dropping our pH to about four nine or so before we're flipping on our kettle. I mean, that just helps kind of keep the color down a little bit. And also we're trying to shoot for a lower pH in the finished beer because of the heavy dry hopping load that we're going to throw at it. So, you know, dry hopping at four pounds per barrel or so um, is going to greatly increase your, your pH. So, you know, the more you dry hop, the higher the pH uh, of the final beer. I don't think there's a silver bullet of the perfect pH, final pH is for, for a hop forward beer. I did do a little bit of work and uh, wrote a, a, a short article about just trying different pH levels in a, in a hop forward beer, taking a heavily dry hopped double IPA and a um, pale ale that was about at two or three pounds per barrel dry hopped and then adding acid um, to the finished beers at different levels um, just to, to taste and, and think about it. And in that particular case, I liked the slightly lower pH only in the higher ABV beer. Going too low in the lower ABV beer was a little bit too just didn't help the flavor linger. It just kind of like cut it off a little too soon. Whereas the slightly lower pH, I think I ended up going to like 4.5 or 4.5 in that double IPA, just kind of helped it smooth out a little bit. I I found myself wanting another drink a little quicker. pH has a huge role in in beer and and how hops express themselves. Um, You know, just higher pH in general is is a better way at extracting hop compounds. It's tricky because you can't have the best of both worlds. You can't, you know, have a 8% batch or 8 pH dry hop tank and then extract super efficiently in there and then transfer over. I mean, I guess you could try it, but for us, it's just being, being practical. We're trying to set ourselves up for a lower final pH, knowing we're going to dry hop it heavily, which is going to raise that pH. And then kind of going from there, we're doing a lot of doctoring post dry hop to get to a certain level. But I think there is some value in thinking about the final pH of your beers and the dry hop level to see what speaks to you. It's a very simple thing to do is just pour a a couple of your beers out into a glass, measure the pH, drop in a little, uh, you know, phosphoric acid or lactic acid, um, just a small amount and just keep tasting those beers at the different levels and, and see if anything, anything speaks to you. And then you can kind of use that to, for future batches or even, you know, dosing, you know, just filling a, a small keg, a purge keg with the acid amount you want for your bigger tank. Um, you know, purging it, running beer into that keg and then shooting it back into your tank as a way to post doctor the pH, what your small bench top samples, if it, you felt like it really made a huge improvement to the beer. So there are ways to utilize post-doctoring beers at, at different pHs, but you know, I don't have a hard and fast rule on you know, what the final pH target should be in these beers, and there's you know, so many variables that can impact it. You know, T90 versus cryo, I think you'll have different pH impacts, but it's something to, to monitor and it's something to experiment with in the glass to to see if you know there's steps you should take to you know hopefully slightly improve uh, improve a hoppy beer because that's what we're all after on the other end of the spectrum of, of ph you know if you're pretty low say you're doing a uh, a kettle sour or a quick sour with like a f- the philly strain or a mixed firm beer where you're you know finishing in the in the threes it's been my experience that the lower ph hides the hop variety specific flavor and and aroma you're after in the beer. Generally, dry hopping at those lower pHs creates more of a generic hoppiness to me. Um, And it really takes hops that are very expressive and are, you know, that really stand out on their own to be a true hop to variety form in those lower pH beers. So, you know, if you're doing like a Simcoe, Mosaic, Citra, mixed firm dry hop beer at a 3.5 pH, I mean, you're comparing that to a double IPA you did with those same hop varieties at it's like a you know, four or five pH. Significantly different beers in terms of aroma to me. The lower pH is just gonna be more of this like neutral, like Pez candy kind of flavor you get in sour IPAs. So I think it takes certain hops like Ruaka, for example, or a Nelson, how the hop is themselves is more aggressive. So it takes something like that in those lower pH beers to really stick through the process, especially if you're going to like bottle condition, um, that beer's sitting warm for a couple weeks, 
it just takes a pretty potent top to really stick up in those conditions in our experience.